this is with uh, yesterday's continuation. We kind of covered a storage service. And basically, we have seen the importance of what you mean by storage account. How is it, uh, I mean, useful, what kind of access deals we have, what kind of data protection policies we have. Um, in case of storage account, usually, I mean, once we create a storage account, there are three to four different, um, what you call as data storage formats. Now, data storage format means we have seen a blob. Blob means binary large object. We have given you an idea. It can dump, I mean, we can dump any image also. We can dump any audio file, video file. All that information can be dumped into that containers. So container is a part of blob storage. I mean, in storage account, there are four different data storage. One is the basic blob storage. And this is the most widely used storage. 90% of the time people go with blob storage. But apart from blob storage, there is a concept called as queue storage. Queue storage. And there is one more component called as table storage. And at the last, there is a component called as list. There's a component called as list storage. Now we will see all the different three. Uh, how different these three storages are with respect to a blob storage. So if you go to the storage account, um, so one thing, as we discussed yesterday, whenever you log in the Azure portal, make a habit, you have to always click on subscription, go to subscription name, come down to resource group or directly to resources, and then check, click on that specific resource. So if you keep a habit of this, you will get a basic understanding that how you will not forget the hierarchy of uh, cloud architecture. Somewhere, if people are directly searching the resources or services here, some at some at point of time, you might end up um, forgetting the hierarchy of information. So I would always recommend to use that same approach, subscription, resource group, and then resources. So we have this, um, I mean, the storage account. And if I come down, see there are some options here. Containers, queues, and tables. Now this files is nothing but a, List is nothing but a file storage. So what is the basic differences? See, in case of blob storage, we can load structured, we can load unstructured, both the data. I mean, blob storage can take images, blob storage can take uh, audio, video files, or it can take some tables also. So unstructured is the files, images, audio, video, storages. These are all kind of unstructured file formats. Whereas in case of structure is a table, there is a relationship, uh, the RDBMS system, RDBMS tables that can be loaded to the blob storage. Now, in case of queue storage, it is slightly different. Now, what is exactly a queue storage is, if you are getting some information in terms of a queue, now queue means if one of the information you are getting as a message and with the continuity of that message there is one more message which is coming after some time which is message two and after some time a message is coming as message three so somewhere there is a continuity of information which is coming but there is a dependency message one again message two is dependent on message one message three is dependent on message two somehow there is a queue queue like structure in that case, we would use this queue storage. Limited use case, very limited. Um, still, it's a part and parcel of storage account. You can use this. Now, coming down to stable storage, the name itself suggests it's a straightforward entity. We can store the structured information wherever the information is structured. That means your RDBMS tables, where there is a relationship, that information can be blindly dumped to a table storage. All this information can be dumped. A queue can be dumped to blob. A table storage can be dumped to blob storage. And a file storage can also be dumped to a blob storage. Blob storage can accommodate all these three storages all together in them. I mean, in, inside the blob, inside that container. Advantage people go with blob is it can take any kind of data. There are no restrictions there. For some 
filtered data for some queue data for some structured data we have queue storage we have table storage and the last one is file storage see what do you mean by file storage it is a semi structured information it is not even purely structured it is a semi structured information now what do you mean by semi structured is see in case of structured all the information all the tables all the columns are somewhere related to each other i mean with that similar column we can have a relationship between multiple tables in case of semi structured that is not the case there would be only one similar column but the information is not purely structured in case of file storage any files if you are taking into consideration a text file a csv file you can assume that as semi structured formats csv is not a structured format it's a semi structured format a text file okay somehow the information is you look it is it it looks like a structure but it is not purely structured it has to be a table in that case it is a structured format if it is not a table a csv a text file is always a semi structured format and just we have containers in blob we have a component if i go back if you click on this file storage we have a file share if i go to containers i mean in the blob storage we have a concept called as container container is nothing but a folder similarly in file storage we have a option called as file share which is called as file shares file share is nothing but a folder you can create a folder see you can create a folder what is the maximum capacity of files you can load to this folder um what is the access tier hot cool or transaction optimized say if there is one more advantage here lowest transaction cost price for transaction heavy loads that don't need to that don't need the low latency offered by premium file share see there is this additional option which is a new introduction transaction optimized that means if you only want to dump data and pull out the data that's it i mean you are not going to each and every file and checking which data is present how the data is there so for that reason people would always recommend to go with transaction optimized it is way more cheaper as compared to hot and cold we have an additional access tier which is present for this file format or file share which is also a part of wait, my bad which is also a part of data storage inside this storage account so just like we have containers we have file shares here a folder can be created and the information which are dumped to this file shares are called as files it can be 1 tb file it can be 2 tb file but as i have said the information needs to be semi structured if you load any image to it it will not work it will not take that image and we would not be focusing on all these three formats why a 90% of the time people go with this blob storage it can take any data no restriction um, i mean no uh, any as such uh, information which cannot be loaded to the blob storage all these information can be part of blob so one reason to call storage account as blob storage is in storage account this is the only data storage format which which accepts all kinds of data irrespective of whatever the stru structure of the data is so in simple terms if you come across uh, there would be few questions in interviews that what do you mean by queue storage explain them that queue storage is somewhere the information is getting in i mean the information is getting loaded one after the other which is somewhere there is a dependency a message it is coming in a queue so somehow queue can be also part of blob because blob can accept any kind of data format table is more a kind of structure and file storage is it is a kind of semi structure where all files are kept but if you can explain it in detail that all these three formats can be dumped as a normal storage inside a blob so it can take any structured unstructured uh, semi structured any kind of data and see if i come down to queue you can create a queue here it is asking me queue name it will create a queue and the information would be coming one after the other but as i've said limited use case very very limited use case and if i come down to table you can give a table name and you can create a table structure here 
just like you create in SQL, you can create a table structure here. So options are there. The thing is very limited use case. It has to be of that same format. That is the reason people go with data. I mean, the containers, which is a blob storage. It can take any kind of data, any kind and see on what, I mean, if you have created a storage account, on what basis you have selected the storage account, you can load a maximum amount of data also. In TBs, in petabytes also, the information is kept inside this containers, even in petabytes. More than terabytes, even in petabytes, the information is also kept. May not be in one single folder, maybe may not be in one single file also. It can be multiple files, but as I've said, aggregated petabytes of information can also be part of this container or a blob storage. Now, we have seen the basic idea of this uh, blob storage or a, I mean, the storage account. Um, let's see one more service, which we would be going further using it on frequent basis. See, this one service storage account we would be using on daily basis. If you use ADF, you should have a basic idea about storage account. Because without storage account, storage account can be source, storage account can be destination in ADF. Somewhere from the file, you have to dump from, uh, I mean, you have to get information from storage account and you have to dump it to some other folder or maybe from uh, one of the SQL server, you have to dump a data into storage account. So somewhere storage account, we would be using on day-to-day -day basis. Now we would be seeing one more service, which we would be using on day-to-day -day basis is, is our SQL. SQL, we would be using on frequent basis. How to create that SQL server, how that SQL database works. Yeah, someone has a question there. Yeah. Uh, Ritesh Mahalakshmi here. Mm -hmm. So in, am I audible? Yep, you've got it. Yeah. So if any of the services are trying to access the storage account, our storage account is trying to access some other services, how it could be? Okay. Example, so there, there I'm working on application. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to uh, receive files from other application. So there mm -hmm. should be a handshake, right? Like uh, yeah. it based there on the a... key, it should. Yeah. There is a handshake. Or if I want to send the file to any other application, how can we handle this? In... There is a handshake. When I would be starting with ADF on Monday, you will get a basic idea there. In case of ADF, if you want to connect it to source, there is a component called as data set. There is a component called as linked service. Linked service is nothing but your key. From that linked service, you have to go back and connect to that source or destination and get the access credentials. Using access credentials, we can get the connections of linked services and then we can connect it to source or destination. How it works, maybe on Monday, I'll clearly give you an idea. But as I've said, prior jumping to ADF, we need to understand what can be source, what can be destination. So the reason why I'm covering storage account first, the reason why I'm covering SQL first is you need to understand these two, only then you can jump to ADF. If you directly jump to ADF, Without any source or destination, there is no use case. Thanks, hmm. now, yep. In simple like terms, that. to give you a more exposure, this is, this is a source. In between, there is ADF pipeline and there are multiple activities which are present inside this pipeline. And this is your destination. So if you want to connect the ADF pipeline, somewhere you want to connect to this source, right? And then you have to dump it to destination. So if you want to connect to the source, there is a component called as data set and there is a connectivity mode called as linked service. Again, here, if you want to dump the information to the destination also, there would be one data set and there would be a linked service. What do you mean by data set is, it will convert that whatever data we have transact, I mean, whatever data we have uh, made sure the uh, the transactions or maybe transformation is done, it will convert it to the destination, how it will load to that destination. And with the help of linked service, linked service is nothing but a, a kind of key which is present. You have to use this linked service and then dump to the 
destination. It will connect that destination using linked service and the data would be converted to the destination format at this data set. There is source data set, there is destination data set or sync data set, which we call destination is called as a sync. So source data set, it will convert whatever data format we have to the ADF understandable format. And if you want to connect that data, there is again a linked service which is present. Linked service, you can call it as a handshake here. It is going back and connecting to the source with the help of some access credentials. And it will convert that data into the ADF format in terms of data set. From that data set, you can take the data, create some transformations or logic, then load it to one of the data set at the sync level. That data set would be down to the destination using a one more link service. The ideal architecture of ADF. This is how the ADF flows. For every ADF, there is a link service, there is a data set, there is a pipeline, there are activities. You have to have these components without which nothing will work. Hmm. So, Maybe uh, if I elaborate, if you take a real time, any real time example, um, just take uh, maybe uh, any any random example. If you take a look, the reason why they are keeping all these formats is if you use containers, containers are costly. If you use table and you want to dump information in tables only, tables are way more cheaper. If you use this table format, it is way more cheaper. And people only want to dump information in terms of tables. They can go blindly with this table format. It is cheaper. If it tables is costing 10 rupees for one month, containers will cost you 100 rupees. But the thing is, as I've said, I mean, in terms of storage account, people, 90% of people tend to go with containers because data can be any format. By chance, if the tables are not correctly structured, somewhere it is semi-structured, this table storage will not accept it. It will fail that and you have to again come down and change the table format to some container format. Again, you have to reload all that information. The reason to go with container is a straightforward condition. It can take any kind of information. That is the reason. And as I've said, blob storages are not that costly. It's a normal... Uh, even containers are not that costly. If I if I go back, I mean, yesterday I created this service. Uh, I've created this resource. So I'm trying to go back and check my current cost is 142. And what is the uh, exact cost which I have uh, bared for storage account? Let me see. Top products by number of resources, cost by resources. Yeah, I'll let me click on view details. Here you will get a basic idea. See, there is a cost analysis component or a service which is also present in this Azure. So you have to go back and see all this. It will take some time because it will like get all the statistics. Hmm. So I've been using the SQL database since long. Since long, I'm been using. If you take a look at the storage account, it is not even one Indian rupee, not even 10 paisa, way more less than that. So containers on an average that are not that costly. I mean, I have loaded a table, right? I mean, yesterday I've loaded, I've used an upload format. I've uploaded some information to this uh, container also. But even then, as I've said, it's cheaper. If you use table, it is way more cheaper. But as I've said, if in table, if something is going wrong, if the table is not even structured in one of the case, in that case, it will not accept that. Again, you have to reload that information, maybe in some other storage format. So there are options which are open just because it doesn't mean that everything can be loaded to container by other formats are kept. There are few people who would have a question that Okay, we want to only load tables. Why can't we have a table structure format or table storage format? For that reason, they have kept that individual options open. Hmm. Now coming down to one more service which we would be covering uh, is SQL. Now SQL can be a source, a SQL can be a destination. 
Now, there are two different services, basically in terms of databases. Service two, which we would be starting is your SQL server. In case of SQL server, you need to create separate server. We need to create a separate server and a separate database. Because both are totally different. I mean, without server, you cannot create a database. And there is one more component called as Azure SQL. There is a one more component called as Azure SQL. This, this can be service three because it's a separate service. Both will have same similarities. Azure SQL will also work like a normal SQL database only. But advantage here is Azure SQL server is automatically managed. We may need not go back and create any individual server. Whereas in case of SQL server, you need to create a server and then you have to create a database. Only then it will work. So let's see what is the basic difference, how it works. I'll give you a basic idea how to create this server, what all components will come into picture while creating this servers and database, because this is important. You have to understand the architecture. Only then you can go back and create that services. Now let us go back. Uh, I'm in the subscription. Let me scroll down to resource group. Um, this resource group I've been using and inside this resource group, I want to create a server. So let me click on create. It will get a list of all the services which are available. So what I want to create, I want to create a SQL server. So let us mention SQL server straightforward. So there are multiple options here. In case of SQL Server, if you see, there are multiple options. Now, what kind of server you want to create? The SQL Server Reporting Service, SSRS, it is also a part of cloud. If you are activating SQL Server Reporting Services online service, you have to activate it from the cloud. You can see here, SSRS. And SSRS is a legacy system. People are using Power BI. Power BI is developed on top of SSRS. ADF is developed on top of SSIS, SQL Server Integration Service. For the people who have joined new for this Azure, this is how that legacy systems are outdated. I'm not saying they're totally outdated. There are few organizations which are using SSRS and IS still today because there can be some, they have their biggest important data. They don't want to navigate, they won't, don't want to move out. But companies which are tech friendly, which are tech focused, they always move out from SSRS and IS as of now. Power BI is the latest thing, upgraded version of SSRS. And ADF is the latest thing, upgraded version of SSIS. Now coming back to our SQL Server, what kind of SQL Server do we want to create? So you, you will get multiple options. In case of SQL Server, if you are getting confused, best thing is, this is the ideal server which I want to create. SQL Server, logical server. The ideal uh, component which I want to create is this. So you will get all these options. If you are getting confused at somewhere, at some point of time from this marketplace, then you have this option called as search bar in the above. SQL servers. Here, there would be only directly a straightforward. See, there are a few options here. Again, I'll go back to the home tab. Here, you will get this SQL server. This symbol you have to follow. This is not even a logical component. This is not even a logical component because there are multiple services with the same name. Do not get confused. There are few legacy services which are part of cloud. This is the correct server. SQL Server, click on create. I already have one of the server, but let me create one more server. Keep one thing in mind. If you are creating SQL Server, it's a separate server, right? It is totally free. It is totally free service. If you only create server, it is totally free service. But without ser server, there cannot be any database. And without database, server is of no use. So somewhere, if you only create server and you keep it idle, it is of no use. You have to have a database. Okay. If you're not using database on daily basis, you can go ahead and delete that database. 
you can delete that database. Now, let me create a server. See, it is asking me which subscription under the subscription, what should be the resource group? I'll go with this resource group. And what is the server name? What is the server name? Maybe I can give some random names. You're still creating what is on the cloud, right? Yep, I'm still creating in the cloud. So this is my server name. Your server name can only contain lowercase letters, numbers, and hyphens. And it can have it can't have more than 63 characters in length. So have I taken anything? Okay, everything should be small. Hmm. Now all three conditions are satisfied. See one um, component in cloud while creating this server, it is giving some option here. Your subscription does not have an access to create a server in the selected region. Why I'm logging, I'm creating this server from India. Sometimes the Azure portals are smart enough to give you a suggestion that why you are creating a server from US, if you are part of India, go with some India location. Let's try. Storage account I've created in US only. East US. Let's see if we have an India. We have India. Central India, South India and West India. Let's go with Central. Recommended is this. Yeah, looks good. Scroll down. While creating a server, there are a few other options here. Authentication methods. Now, what do you mean by authentication? How to log into this server? By using only intra authentication. Now, what do you mean by intra authentication is the person who is creating this server and person who would be giving access. I mean, if a person is creating a server and he is giving an access with the same email IDs, if he is trying to log in, only then that people would be able to log in. That is intra authentication. Intra means Azure Active Directory. It's a service which is present in cloud. Whenever you create a new email ID, that email ID would be added to this server. You need to go back and add the access control. Only that same email IDs which are part of this server would be able to access. This is first and maybe widely used approach. But I'll use the second approach. What do you mean by second approach is? Second is a combination of SQL username and password as well as intra authentication. That means if a person is added to this, um, if an email ID is added to this server, he can log in directly with that email ID also, or else you can have your own username and password. You can have your own username and password and recommended most of the times people go with second, not with the first, because there are few people who would not be given direct email ID accesses, but they would be shared with user ID and password. So that is how it works. In case of intra authentication, you need to set up who would be the admin for this server. So let me set up an admin. Uh, Ritesh, what's an intra uh, entry uh, or authentication? Can you please explain? Okay. So a person with specific email ID. Now, if you see Kiran Kumar, if I add this person, this person can log into this server without username and password. Why? Because his email ID is added to that server. Somehow entra means direct email access. How many email accesses are you are adding to this server? That is called as entra. So basically a new password yeah, is not needed. Not required. Yeah, not required. Oh, so thus if he is logged into Azure account with that email, then he yes. can log he can directly log in. Yep. Got it. In Entra is nothing but a direct email which is added. You can directly add. A new email is created via Entra ID portal. If you want to create a new email ID, let me show you that as well. Hmm. So there is a service called as Microsoft Entra ID. I want to create a new person has joined this ASR batch. I want to create his email ID. I have to go back to this service. Click on Microsoft Entra ID. There is an option, user. I want to create a new user. See, under KSR Consultant Services, this is our domain. This is our primary tenant ID. I want to create a new user. I have an option. What should be the email of that person? 
I can give that name, name or email. What should be the display name? I have that flexibility. You can create, you can add new users using Microsoft Entra ID. That same component is used here. In case of SQL Server, if a user has an email ID, that Entra ID, he can directly access if you add that person here. That is how it works. Now, what am I doing is, I would be adding only my email and I can share this user ID and password with some other individuals also. Even that is visible. So I would be adding my email ID as admin email ID. So I've added my email as admin. Maybe I have to give server admin login. So this is my server admin and I can give a password. So password is matching. Next, go to networking. Hmm. Now, in order to connect to this server, if you, a person is logging from a different IP address, I want that person to connect without any firewall connectivity issue. You have to click this. Yes. Allow Azure services and resources to access this server. Any other person who is joining from some other IP address, um, any services which we are activating from a different IP address, that services can have access to this SQL server. Yes. Default it is no, go with yes. Now next is security. Security as such, we don't require because we are not creating that important server. Maybe internally we are going to create. So no as such uh, configuration required here. Go to additional settings. See, there is a security service. I have covered, I've given you an idea for every service present in Azure, there is a security service option available. If there is an attack on this SQL server, uh, some person, some third party person, some hacker is coming and hacking this server, this Microsoft Defender will protect. There are few options. There is a C, there is itself protect your data using Microsoft Defender, a unified security package, including vulnerability assessment and advanced threat protection for your server. I mean, we are individual, we are creating our own servers. No as such requirement needed and it is a costly service. After 30 days of free trial, you have to pay one four. Uh, 1247 Indian rupees per server per month. Not required. Default, it is not now. Go to tags. Tags, anyways, keep it blank. Go to the last option. So it is authenticated. Let me click on create. See, I'm only creating server as of now. Nothing apart from server I've created. Inside this server, we have a flexibility to go back and create a database. The test up. I don't know if I missed. So did you give the capacity of the server or anything like that? Or nothing? No. Database capacity is required, not for server. Once the server is created, inside the server, we would be creating a database. There the database capacity, depending on the capacity, the billing varies. Server is a free component. As I've said, if you only create a server, it is totally free service. It will not charge a single penny also. If you create a database, yes, on what kind of database you are creating, what is the capacity of this database, the charges would vary. Like in Windows Server, right, you think about a, a storage space, you think about uh, RAM and everything, but you're saying that is not needed and it's automatically adjusted depending on the capacity. So of Windows the Server is different. Windows Server is more a kind of complete virtual machine. We are only creating a database server. This is totally different. This will only act like a server for a database, not for a complete virtual machine or not for yeah. a complete yeah. machine. Got it. Okay. Now, once this is created, click on go to resource. So inside this, you'll get multiple options towards left. There is an option called as SQL database. There's an option called as SQL elastic pools. SQL Elastic Pools is also like a database, but more a kind of large data pools are created here. Our primary aim is to go with SQL databases only. See, in, in the overview page, you have an option to reset password. If you forget your password, somewhere 
or maybe you understand maybe somewhere you want to change the password if some other person has got your password you want to change that password you can change your password here server admin whatever admin name i have mentioned it is coming directly here what is the server uh, name this is our server name ksr august 2024 server.database.windows.net you can copy this there is an option copy to clipboard now if you want to connect this server to the SSMS tool in your local system, even that is feasible. You can download SSMS and you can connect this server, but there has to be some database in it. So how to create a database? There is an option called a SQL database. Click on SQL database. As of now, there are no databases. As of now, there are no databases. Is the server yet in creating mode? Just let me refresh this because there is no uh, option to create a database here. I'm trying to. Interesting. We will get a plus icon here. We are not getting that plus icon. In that case, let me go back. Home tab. I want to create a SQL database. Just mention database. Yeah, this service. So there is already a database created in a different server for me. Let me create one more database. Click on create. This database would be connected to the server. Hmm. Now, while creating a database, you have an option called as capacity. See what kind of capacity, what would be the minimum charges per month, depending on how many cores you are utilizing, how many database uh, transaction units you are utilizing, all that we have to select it here. While creating a SQL database, the, uh, the Azure portal itself is giving you a recommendation. Want to try C Azure SQL database for free? Create a free serverless database. Our database is SQL Server plus database, whereas if you want to create Azure SQL, it is totally free. It is totally free for one year and it is serverless. That doesn't mean there won't be any server. There would be a server, but it is managed by Microsoft team, not by us. Azure SQL. This would be service three. This would be totally managed. The server would be totally managed by Microsoft, not by manual or not by any individual. So come down. We would create both the components because there are options. Uh, we will see all that. Come down, subscription is selected. You have to select that same resource group. Recommended is go with that same resource group. Done. You have few options here. Okay. Where it would be created. That is big reason. If I again go back, let me go back to the home tab because I want to create that SQL database inside the server which I've created. Let me see. This is our server. Interesting. Why there is no option? If I go to this, there is a database which is coming. Okay, let's... Let's go back and let's recreate that. SQL databases. Subscription is selected. This is our resource group. Uh, what should be the database name? You have an option to select server here. So you have an option. I can select a server. You have to have select any give a database name let me give it a name so you can select which server uh, the database needs to be created want to use sql elastic pool not required what kind of server is it a development or a production server you have that flexibility you can select that most important component while creating a database keep one thing in mind if you're creating database do not create it randomly please have a focus on it if by chance 
you haven't selected or you haven't changed this option. You are going with hyperscale. This is one of the costliest database. Click on configure. Hyperscale, what is the maximum cost? 24,405 Indian rupees per month. Not recommended. You have to click on that option. It will open a new pop-up window. You have a drop down. What option you want to select, go with that option. Ours is general purpose. Even if you select general purpose, it is costlier. Because number of cores selected, what is the maximum storage? You have to have go back and see what is the basic. I will go with standard. Let's see, standard is also 1400 per month. Our usage is not even 1400. I mean, we would be not using DTUs. DTUs is nothing but database transaction units. In 10 transaction units, you can store 250 GB of information. You can see here, in 10 transaction units, you can store 250 GB. 250 GB is also not required. Go with the option called as basic. Basic will have maximum of 2 GB, more than enough. For our practice purpose, more than enough, not required. Go with this basic, change it to 2, 465 rupees. Easier for us, not that costly. Click on apply. You have selected 2 GB basic storage. Compute and storage is done. There is a backup option also. I mean, I would go with locally redundant backup. Not required with geo and zone redundant backup. I mean, it, it varies. Geo is costlier. Zone is somewhat cheaper as compared to geo, but locally is very cheaper. Go with locally redundant backup storage. Let me click on networking. See in networking also, there are few options. The first option is grayed out. Why? Because server we have selected. Yes, we can connect server to any of the services. Add current IP address. Yes. This is my IP address. If I scroll down somewhere, I'll get my IP address also. Uh, where is it? Okay, let's see. Go back. We have to see the other options also. Make sure you are adding your own current IP address also to connect to this database. Click on security. Defender. See, there is also a defender to add it here. That same component, not required. Um, there is a ledger option. This is also not required. Go to additional settings. Um, go with all the default which we have. Review and create. See here you'll get an idea. 465 Indian rupees per user or per database per month. Everything is correctly selected. Let me click on create. Ritesh, uh, what was the DTU uh, that you mentioned? Database uh, transaction uh, units. See, there are two different components on which the database amount is calculated. One is cores. Core is nothing but just like your laptop has cores, right? Dual core, octa core. More the number of cores, costlier would be the laptop because it is how uh, multitasking it can handle. More the number of cores, more multitasking it can handle. So hyperscale, all that high level information, high level databases uses core concept. If you are handling bulk amount of data and parallel, you want to process that go with hyperscale where core concepts is there. More the number of cores, more would be the cost here. Now, if you come down to the basic level, in that basic level, there is DTU. How many transaction units you are running per second, depending on that, it would be the charges would be calculated. So for DTU, one with two GB of storage, more than enough. The DTU 10 with 250 GB, it was somewhere around 1450, not required. We will get some 13,000 Indian rupees credits, but still it is not required. I would not recommend to create that. And keep one thing in mind, whenever you are creating any database, you have to have your ideal state. Select the appropriate database, which is nothing but your basic. And by chance, if you're not using that database for two days, delete it. Server, you can keep it. You can delete your database. I'll show you how to delete it. Now the database is created. Let me go to the resource. 
So you are here, you have all your flexibility. You can see which is the server name under which server it is created. It is not an elastic pool. Pricing tier is basic. So all that information is kept. How to log in? There is an option here in the Azure portal itself. There is a query editor preview. Click on query editor. So there is an option here. See, this is our IP address, my current IP address. Now I need to add this IP, click on allow IP. There are two options here. One is SQL Server Authentication, one is Microsoft Entra Authentication. I can log in using both the components. Either once my IP address is added, I can log in using direct Entra ID. If I click here, see, automatically I've logged in. I've logged in automatically. Now, what I'll do, again, I'll go to the Home tab. Let me go to SQL Databases the SQL database which I've created, I'm going back. I'm clicking on query editor. Either I can use Entra ID or else I can use the second option which is SQL Server Authentication. Let me mention the password. Both the options are enabled. Entra ID, which is directly by email ID where I've added myself as an admin. I can add any other individual also. How to add? Now this is database, right? This is our database. I'm trying to see where can I add. You cannot add any person to directly database. You have to add him to the server because database is dependent on server. Let me go to home tab. Click on this SQL servers. This server, you have an option called as access control. You want to add any individual, add role assignment. What kind of role assignment you want? You want to add a person as a reader. Click on reader. Click on next which user you want to add, select that user from list of email IDs which are available here for the KSR services, consultant services. You have to click on that, get that person email ID, add them. Let's try, I'll give you an idea. I'm not sure. I'm trying to add, but you people doesn't have uh, portal access as of now. Anyways, let me try to add. Now I've added Anand. Let me click on next. So there is direct option. If I go to previous, what does this reader mean? He can view all the resources, but he cannot change anything. There is an option called as view. If I click on view, you will get all these permissions which are available. He can read, he cannot change anything. He can read all these components which are part of server and database. Everything is read. So, we have to select what role for that person. Click that, get that person details. You can give a description while adding that I have added so and so person with read access. Click on next, review and assign. If I review and assign, now Anand doesn't have an access for the cloud, but yeah, he's already added. How we can check he's already added? There is a role assignment tab here. See. Anand is already added. Now, Santosh, um, our trainer, is the ideal administrator for this complete consultant service domain. I am administrator for this server only, but he is ideal administrator for this complete tenant ID. So that is the reason his name is also coming. So all that information is present here. Who I've added, who I would be adding further. You can add 4,000 different individuals also. Maximum limit is 4,000. As of now, there are three because one is admin. I am the admin. The other two, one is reader and one is the uh, domain admin. So there are three roles which are already added. You can add still 3,997 roles. 4,000 is the maximum limit. Now we have seen how to create a SQL server. SQL server with SQL database. I mean, you can directly write a query. Inside the SQL Server, if I go to SQL Database, see the database which I've created inside this, this is coming here. Again, I'll go down here, Query Editor. Let me log in. You can write your SQL queries here. Whatever SQL queries you want, you can write that query, you can run that. It will work. 
I hope for the people who have joined with SQL, they know the importance of big int. Where is created. Done. So I can use a select star from the table name. And this is our result. Name, address, contact. This is how the table looks like. If you insert few records, it would be available. So it is just like a query editor, online query editor. So we have only table view and so forth. As of now, I've only created one table. You can load. Um, I mean, you can create any query. You can create any query. Yep. You have an option. What all tables? See the table which I've created. Views. There are default views which are available and. If you are creating any stored procedures, that will also be reflected here. So this is SQL Server with SQL Database. Let us create Azure SQL. Azure SQL, it is a serverless database. We may need not create any server. You can directly create a database. And as I said, Azure SQL is almost free for one year. Let me go to Home tab. Hmm. Mention as your SQL, this one. So in Azure SQL also, you are getting these databases. Why is it so? These databases and Azure SQL databases both are same. There is a difference, but both are same. Let me click on create. What you want to create? You want to create managed instance, you want to create virtual machine, SQL virtual machine, or you want to create a database. I want to create a database, single database. Let me click on create. This is a serverless database. It is asking me some server, somewhere it is asking me, want to try free Azure database for free, click on apply offer. Offer is automatically applied. So you can see zero, zero, everything is zero. Everything is zero. You have to mention the database name, the same options which we have used. Let it go with any default server. It, because just because we have created two servers, it is going with default server. It uh, is going uh, with some default server. Yep, go ahead, go ahead. You're uh -huh. not creating just a regular SQL database because it says- No, it is not regular SQL database. It's an Azure SQL database. You have okay. to click on that apply offer. If I remove this, see, this is how it will look. You have to click on apply offer preview. It will take okay. some time. Yeah, totally it is zero. Maximum storage you can store is 41 GB. It's okay. I mean, anyways, 41 GB is more than enough. You can use it. And this is for one year, not for one month. 32 GB of backup storage free per month for lifetime. Oh, it's, uh, I mean, it's a new update for lifetime. 32 GB every month you are getting. If you go beyond 32 GB, somewhere it will give you an error that you are going beyond 32 GB, it would be chargeable. You have to select that option for chargeable. So default, it will select some random server. You can give it a name. See, there are few options. You cannot change the redundancy. It is grayed out because you have selected Azure SQL, it is automatically managed by Microsoft. Behavior when free travel, uh, free offer limited is reached. You want to continue or you want to auto pause? After 32 GB is utilized per month, you want to continue or you want to pause it? I want to pause it. Default, it will go with pause. And it is a general purpose serverless 32 GB. It's okay. I would recommend to create both the databases. Server with normal SQL database and server with Azure SQL database. Slight difference. I'm not saying both are totally different. Very slight difference is there. Azure SQL is totally free, but there is a limitation 32 GB and 1 lakh V course. You will get 1 lakh V course, which is visual course. It will process that data in 1 lakh different course parallelly. It is very fast. If you have selected very basic level, it is very slow. But this Azure SQL is a very fast if you compare it with a normal SQL database. And all other options are same. 
I have to give it a name. Let me give it a name. Let me change the resource group. I mean, whatever server you want, you can create that server and give it a certain name. Um, free Azure DB. Then a name is given. Auto pause. Click on it. Networking. Allow current IP address. Again, everything is free here. Go to security. Not required. Go with default options. What is this option? Okay, not required, not required, not required. This would match. Everything is free. Click on create. It will create a free database. So the database which we created with SQL Server and a normal SQL DB, it is slightly different. Different in terms of costing, different in terms of how it is managed. That's it. What you do in that database and what you do in Azure SQL database, everything is same. The same SQL components are used. See, free monthly course of 1 lakh, more than 1 lakh, it's 10 lakh, it seems. Or 1 lakh, yeah, it's 1 lakh. Seconds, V core seconds remaining. I mean, anyways, it's good for us. Overbilling disabled. If you click on this, you have an option. If you want to, I mean, we have selected auto pass, you can change it to continue. It would be chargeable when that limit is completed. We don't want that. I'll, I'll go with auto pause. It will automatically pause. You cannot use this database after 32 GB and 1000 V cores per second. There is a limit. And the same thing, you have to log in using that same option. I've logged in. This is a separate database. See, there are no tables present in it. If I again go back, go to the SQL databases. This is our earlier database which I've created where we have created one table, ABC. That table is present here. Both are different. Creation steps are different. Some background architecture is different, but both will work like a database, normal SQL database. Only. What you do here, that can be done in that free preview also. Both are open. Hmm. Any questions on this? So, Ritesh, what's the basic difference on Azure SQL and regular SQL Server? I know they're both from Microsoft. So what are the basic uh, cons or pros if you can uh, give us I think cons are pros. Azure SQL is somewhere they've introduced to um, make sure that it is reaching the audience. SQL Server and SQL Database, for the people who want to use more than 32 GB, they would go with that SQL Server. For the people who want to get started, how the database is mapped, behaving, what is the architecture of it, they would always go with Azure SQL first free preview. Once they are good with that, company will move to the paid service, which is hyperscale in SQL Server, separate SQL Server and separate database. That's basically... If the company starts with free, this freeze component, if they feel if it's working fine, they'll go to the paid services. Oh, so basically, uh, usually after, you know, so are you saying there is no client that's actually using user uh, Azure SQL for, you know, regular there users. are, there are, if they are utilizing less than 32 GB per month, there are, there are people who are using Azure SQL. I mean, my own team uses it. We usually use some 15 to 20 GB per month. Why to go and pay and take that paid service? If that 20 GB is a part of that 32 GB limit, go with Azure SQL. If you feel that your database is not frequently being used, go with Azure SQL. That is best thing. And Azure SQL is a new introduction. New means not new. In, I mean, not it is not latest uh, introduction. If you compare it with SQL, separate SQL server and separate database, this Azure SQL was introduced way after. I mean, uh, somewhere around four or five years back, this was introduced. Prior to that, it was all paid services. Just to make sure that SQL Server will have a good market presence. 
Microsoft comes up with some different strategies. This is one of the strategy. They'll always give you lifetime free of 32 GB, 1000 V course. Uh, 1 lakh V course. My bad. 1 lakh V course. Well, the basic difference is uh, Azure SQL is on the Azure cloud. Yep. And Both are on Azure SQL cloud. Is... Both are on Azure cloud. Do not get confused. For Azure SQL, as I've said, it is a serverless. That doesn't mean while creating this, we have created, we have selected a server. We have selected a server. It is not recommended to go back and manually create a server. If you do not have a server also, it will ask you to temporarily create some random server there. Both are same, not a, I mean, two, I mean, they are not even a single uh, point of difference. The thing is, in Azure SQL, if you apply that free preview option, you will get 32 GB per month and some 1 lakh V course. That's the only advantage. If you want to use beyond this limit, go with that individual separate database creation. What you do in separate database that can be all done in Azure SQL. Both are same. Do not get confused. SQL server is a part of Azure only. I have created server in Azure Perl Cloud only. Both are part of cloud. So if the clients are moving from on-prem to cloud, they would prefer first to move their SQL server to the SQL server, the first option or they can move directly to Azure SQL based on their uh, size of the database. This is not on-prem. This is not on-prem, this is a cloud. No, no, that is, no, no, what I'm saying, but, that is on cloud, that mm -hmm. understood. You created, have you seen that, okay? Mm -hmm. But if clients are migrating okay. from on-prem- Clients are migrating server, from on-prem to uh, the cloud service, which you're trying to see, right? Right, in that case, what is the ideal, uh, scenario. Okay. Go so with they would always SQL start with this. They would always start with this. If they feel that okay. the 32 GB limit is not okay for us, they'll go with the complete paid service. Understood. Okay, fine. Thank you. Hmm. Any other questions? Yeah, in SQL Server side in Azure, uh, how they are balancing the clusters and uh, suppose the uh, uh, hits are happening more in the SQL Server 1 and 2, 3 how it is going to be uh, managing. You have to go back and increase your course, yes. the DTUs. Okay. You can see, once I've created, it doesn't mean I cannot increase. If I go to the databases, uh, the this database which I've created manually, uh, where I've selected basic pricing tier, click on basic. You will always have a flexibility. You want to increase your, maybe I want to increase it to the premium. 125 DTUs, you have a flexibility, you can select 1000 GB. You can select that, but it varies. Cost varies 64,000. You can always change your pricing. You can always change your DTUs. You can always change your V course performance as and when required. There is no as such that if the third, if you have created with a basic and your data is increasing. That doesn't mean you can again go back and create a new uh, separate database. You can change the existing database also. He, that is how it can be changed. Go to the overview tab, wherever that basic is pricing tier is there, click on that. It will come down to compute and storage. Here you have a flexibility to manually change that service tier. Okay, great. Up to uh, 100 TB or uh, how much we can, uh, uh, we can keep it? Here? There is a limit of 100 TB here. Uh, not 100, it's 1000 TB, it seems. Right? Okay. I've selected hyperscale or premium. Maybe let's see hyperscale, how it works. 80 cores, 450.23 GB memory. This is hyperscale. If I go with premium, I can increase up to 1024 GB. Which is one TB. One TB. Yep. You want to increase it beyond that limit, then you have to create one more database. It's like one another instance. Yep, another instance, another database. In that same server, you can create one more database. Databases are not in petabytes. Generally, in ter I mean, ter I mean the uh, TBs only, terabytes only. 
if that information is more than terabytes, they would dump it to data warehouse. Data warehouse is separate component. In case wise, database, because information is structured here. In data warehouse, you can dump unstructured, semi-structured data also. That is also feasible. Normally, we are uh, saving the MDF file, LDF file, tail lag backup in cloud, right? In uh, blob storage, right? Yes. So there, there is no limit. Uh... In blob also, there are a few limits. Um, if it is going beyond that data storage format, you have to create one more blob. There are few limits. So generally, once you created any database in the Azure SQL, mm -hmm. it normally it stores mm -hmm. all the MDF, LDF, tail lag backup, backup, everything in the blob. We system. haven't selected any backup. While creating this database, you will get that option, right? We haven't selected any backup. Let me click, let me give you an idea. If I click on new database, here there is an option, right? Backup. We have gone with locally redundant backup, which is a default which is option. I mean, this option is default option. The LTR, the ITR, which you are going or which you are explaining is a part of geo redundant storage. If I go with zone also, we have these options. If I go with local, these options are not that widely used, but yeah, I mean, you have this option. What kind of option is best fit? You have to go back and understand. Keep one thing in mind. As a data analyst, we may need not go back and create all these services. It is not our responsibility. It might be a person, a cloud admin, who is the person who is handling all this stuff. Just because we are completely covering how database works, how it, how the architecture looks like, I'm giving you all this idea about. Now, from Monday, we would be directly jumping to the ADF. Our primary aim is to understand ADF. But to start with ADF, you need to have some source and destination. That is the reason I'm creating storage account and databases. One more. Actually, this class is with the Power BI with the... Uh, no, Apple not Apple. with Power BI. Power BI we have already completed, sir. This is only for Azure. Power BI we have already completed. This is for people who already know Power BI and SQL. Power BI we have completed last week. The Power BI batch we have completed. And you can see the other people who are joining. They are all part of Power BI batch. Who already started from Power BI and Power BI was already started back in month of June. So almost three months back. Okay, I will speak to management. Thank you. Yeah. Question. Hmm. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, these settings which you're doing right now. Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Is there a way we can first, when we log in, we mm -hmm. can do the default settings? Very high level generic settings we can do. Mm -hmm. And then when we create the individual service under container, mm -hmm. we, we can inherit those uh, settings. Is it possible or am I I'm just... Mm, no. Inheritance of settings is not possible if you go ahead and create no. some other same service also you want to create. Again, you have to manually set up all this. Inheritance is not part of this, uh, any any independent services. So at the container level, if we do any settings... Container, see, container is a part of storage account. So at storage account level, whatever changes you are making, that would be applied to container. But if you're creating separate, separate containers, that settings varies. Yes, agreed. Yep. So yeah, if I, I, maybe to, I mean, precisely give you an answer. Hey, why am I going to storage? Yep, this is our storage account. And this we is have container. Right? This is your subscription, yeah. right? Yes. So if I go to this container, if I'm adding some person to this container, that same person would not be added to a different container if I create one more container here. Because Correct. I'm adding at that container. Fine. So if we you're cannot adding create at, the yeah, go ahead. we cannot create SQL server here under this container. No, container is storage account is different. 
storage account is used to store some files, not the databases. Database is different. Both are used for storage, but they are totally different. Fine. Uh, so this is a separate service and uh, yeah. database is a separate, separate service. service. Fine. Thank you. Service one is our storage account. Service two is our SQL server with C SQL server is also a separate service and SQL database is also a separate service. And as you SQL is also a separate service. So more so first we need to go through SQL kind of server. Process. Yeah. First we need to go through service. Then we can go with database. Yes. Service. So we kind of covered, ideally we kind of covered three services, but total in total we covered four because SQL server and SQL database are two separate services. Storage account we covered, but, SQL server we covered, SQL database we covered, and Azure SQL we covered. Okay. So, so these four needs, uh, but the second and third could be in the same container? Same manner, yes. Not container, same subscription. Same subscription, yes. Yeah. So the same settings, both, the, both can share the same settings, correct? Not settings. Because independent services, as I've said. Okay. If you are accessing, see, if you are giving access at the subscription level, whatever is a part of that subscription, everyone will get access. Do not forget the hierarchy. Settings are totally different. Settings are with respect to individual services. Accesses are at subscription level, resource group level, resource level, and inside that resources also, if you take an example of container, at container level also, you can give access at database level. Database level, there is no option. Uh, at server level, there is access option you can provide. So you can give at server level or resource level, which is service or resource, at resource group level or at subscription level. Access, yes, it can be inherited. If you are giving access at subscription level, if you create any services under that subscription, that person will have access to all that services because you have given access at the highest level of hierarchy, which is subscription. So here service two and three are in two different subscriptions. Yep. No, no, no. Under same subscription only, but accesses are different. Do not get confused. Okay. Yeah. If I give yeah. access at this subscription level, this that is my subscription. Sense. Yeah. So under this subscription, all these services are there. Either you can give access at subscription level so that all the services would be visible for that person or else you come down to each and every service and you access. Any other questions? As we practice, we will get more confidence but right now. it's Okay. okay. That, 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 yeah. That's common. See, that's if you're doing it for the very first time, you may not, you know, on the very first day or the very first moment, it is not that easy to understand. You will have questions. Yeah. Feel free to ask any questions. I will be able to answer it. For oh, the billing, is there, we can put a trigger somewhere from the, the cost management or the billing? We do. we do have. We can set up alerts. Okay. So I'm trying to delete a database which I have previously created. Let me click on delete. See what services you want to delete. Come down to resources from that subscription level of hierarchy. Click the services. There is an option called as delete here. Click on delete. I'm deleting a database as well as a dependent server. I mean, server and dependent database. You have to mention delete here. Whatever keyword it is asking you to mention that. If you delete one of the component, it will ask you to name that component here. But it is, I'm deleting two, two different services. So I have mentioned delete, click on delete. It would be permanently deleted. But you have used that service up till 9.40 a.m. Indian Standard Time, it would be billed up to this time. And this bill, mm -hmm. subscription, whatever charges are there, that would be coming a day after. After 24 hours, billing would be updated. Mm -hmm. You can see that services are deleted. Okay, one of them is paid. Why one is paid? Okay. Uh, first, you have to delete database and then only you can delete a server. You cannot delete both together. Because dependent Database has to be deleted and then server has to be. But as of now, you can see both the components are deleted. Hmm. Any other questions? Maybe because you checked the other, for other one first and then that's why? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, yeah, that's just out of curiosity. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, guys, go ahead if you have any question. I'll, otherwise, I'll keep asking more. <laughs> no, no, that's, I mean, it's common. If there are no questions, we're good on time. 10 minutes passed. Um, we would connect back on Monday. I would show you how to activate your Azure portals probably on Monday. Um, okay, but the thing is, if you enroll for this, you would be getting email IDs, you would be getting how to access that. We would be starting with basics of ADF on Monday, uh, directly jumping to ADF, how ADF works, what all components we have in ADF, what can be done, the architecture of ADF that we would be seeing. And then going further, we would be uh, uh, working more on ADF, uh, the pipelines, the data flows there. So yeah, when we start practicing actual, then only we should be enabling, uh, we should have uh, that, that uh, free account, which will give us 15,000, right? Yep, yep. So the next week, I'll show you how to activate. As I've said, keep your mm. credit cards handy with you. It would be only used for temporary verification. Whatever charges it would debit, it would again credit it back to your credit card within 24 to 48 hours. You will get that account activated. You can use it for next 30 days. Two rupees only. And and if we delete the subscription at the top, then it's all zero. It's all right? need need not delete subscription. Subscription is also a free resource or maybe a free component. If I delete all the services under this subscription, if I keep the subscription active, there uh -huh. it won't charge a single penny. Perfect. Yeah, du duration, please, sir. How many days it will? 30 days or 40 days? 30 days. The free trials are available for 30 days. No, I'm talking about uh, the this course. In this course. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure if I've attended first session, but yeah, anyways, I'll again repeat it. This would be for one month. We kind of started on 20th, right? 20th this Tuesday. So probably we would be completing on 20th of September, but yeah, I will keep a buffer of 27th. Maximum is 27th, but I would try to complete as early as possible. Maximum is 27th, but somewhere I would be completing around 20th. Our plan is to go by 20th of September. Only ADF? Only or... Uh, uh, okay. Else, Good. I guess and, you missed uh, out. Five, five Three services, right? As a... Yep, yep, yep. So I would be covering... Maybe I've given you all the idea, but let's... Again, give me an idea. These are all the services which I would be covering. Now, the thing is, I have clarified it in the first session also. And again, let me clarify it here. See, we covered storage account. We covered SQL Server and we also covered Azure SQL. These are dependent services. These are dependent services on ADF. Using keywords, handshake would be done. Handshake means connecting database, uh, connecting source and destinations. So one, two, three, four, five. All these five services would be covered in detail because this is more a kind of dependent on all the ADF components. All in detail would be covered. For Databricks, how Databricks architecture is, what is the exact usage of Databricks? I would be covering, may not be end-to-end -end data, Databricks. Why? Because Databricks is more a kind of engineering. I can cover, but you have to have an understanding of Spark and Python. For us, our primary aim is to work on ADF. How this Databricks can be embedded in ADF? There is an activity in ADF where you can embed Databricks notebook. Yes. And what do you mean by Synapse? Synapse is a combination of storage account, Databricks, SQL Server and Azure Data Factory club together, you can say this is also kind of fabric, looks like a fabric. Looks like a fabric, but again, if, if we are covering all the services that are all part of Synapse environment, we call this as Synapse environment, one of the environment. So again, Databricks would not be covered in detail. Why? Because more a kind of engineering work. And at the last, we would be covering Power Automate Flow or Logic Apps. Both are same. Power Automate is a part of Power Platform environment and Logic Apps is a part of Azure. What you do in Logic Apps can be done in Power Automate. 
This is also for automation purpose, how to send automated emails, how to do some automation, automation for existing pipelines to send alerts. In that case, that, that components we would be covering. So the last three would be what you use for ADF that we would be covering, but the above five or five services would be in detail. Because a role is for Power BI, you will not, you will never see a role for Power BI with all the data engineering. It is a combination of Power BI and ADF at many cases. SQL, Power BI plus ADF. If they're asking more a kind of engineering, there won't be any Power BI there. It would be SQL and total data engineering. So that pretty much covers everything from the Microsoft Fabric, right? Or did we... Uh... Yeah, yeah. From a data analyst point of see, see, fabric is not only used by Power BI people. It can be used by data engineers also. It can be used by data scientists also. Fabric sure. doesn't. Yeah, let me give again. Let me again clarify because it's good to clarify it here. Um, if I go to now, as far as this course is concerned, right? I mean, we we I mean, I'm I'm sure we are covering everything Microsoft Fabric. I just wanted to make sure. That's all. Give let me give an idea. Hmm. Inside this fabric, there is a data science and data engineering. Would you ever feel that data engineering and data science is required for a Power BI? We would be covering data factory. If I go to fabric, we would be covering this data factory. We would be covering Synapse data warehouse. Anyways, we would be covering the Synapse architecture there. Data science and data engineering is more a kind of different scenario, right? I, mean, it's, it's I see what you're saying. Yeah. Got it. So what is required from a data analyst point of perspective, all that is covered. Okay, cool. Thank you. Any other questions? We are good. Thank you. Okay. Um, all good. Yeah, um, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, Riches, after completion of this course, can I, uh, we, uh, Come, uh, we uh, clear the uh, Microsoft uh, uh, Fabric certification. There is a high chance that you can clear, but see one thing I'll ask you: if you have cleared PL nine uh, PL three hundred, yeah. in case of Fabric certification, it would be useful. Okay, if you doesn't know Power BI and if you are coming directly to this Fabric, it would be somewhere difficult. If yeah, you know I, Power I BI, yeah, I completed. Yeah, PL. You can, you yeah. can attempt. You can attempt. Okay, okay, yeah, thank you. Okay, if there are no questions, we're good. Um, let's connect back on Monday uh, with our further discussions. Yep, thank you, everyone. Um, any questions related to this course you have, always feel free to connect with the KSR team. Uh, they would always help you. Uh, I mean, Mahesh is anyways connecting on first five minutes. He was explaining all this. So reach out to him. Or reach out to the numbers. Uh, you can visit our KSR Data Vision website also. Uh, if you reach out to any one of the individual also, they'll help you out. If you have any questions, if you have any, uh, maybe uh, there are a few people who are still getting confused. So if you want a confusion to be cleared, you can reach out to our team. How many pipelines will create? I mean, normal, the, the project okay, so, work? Okay, so there are... Uh, 10 to 15 approaches we would be covering, which are frequently used. Frequently in the sense that are the only approaches which are present in ADF. Um, there is a wrangling data flow. There is a mapping data flow. There are the, uh, the uh, uh, bulk data load pipelines are there. Uh, when replace existing, uh, existing file pipelines are there. So moreover, 10 to 15 approaches we would be covering. The approaches which are used on day-to-day -day basis on all the projects. Yeah, hi Ritesh. Good morning. Hey, good morning, Prasad. Uh, yeah, I have a, one general question. So right okay. now I'm working as a Power BI and SQL developer. Okay. Okay. Now I'm confused, bit confused to learn whether this uh, ADF along with my uh, fabric, or else do I need to uh, start this uh, data engineering? Okay. So you are looking out for what kind of rule? Might be Power BI. With SQL, or you are looking out for pure. No, uh, right, right now I'm working. Right now I'm working as Power BI plus SQL. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. now I want to learn ADF. But uh, 
I'm I'm not sure whether I'll get that good scope in this course or else is it good to learn uh, Azure data engineering? Uh, I'm having around experience of uh, six to seven years IT experience, okay. but never okay. I worked on any coding, much coding. Okay, so Power BI, how many years you're working? I, I have around four years of experience. Okay, good. So see, let me give you two options. I mean, it is open. Mm -hmm. So you want to work as Power BI with uh, Azure Stack, then this course is suitable for you. Okay, if you mm -hmm. want to completely move out of Power BI and mm -hmm. you want to learn only engineering stuff, so in that case, the power, the data engineering, the Azure data engineering course is suitable. I mean, there they won't, uh, you won't have much of Power BI exposure. I mean, you have to work on end-to-end -end, uh, pipelines. You have to work on end-to-end. -end. There the concept of Python concept of Spark, concept of Hadoop comes into picture, you need to write some codes because okay. big data management, all that comes into picture. Okay, okay. So the one which we would be covering, uh, okay, there would be some amount of SQL required, nothing mm -hmm. more than that. Apart from SQL, okay, Python is not that we would be covering. Uh, somewhere in Databricks, you yeah, have some Spark tech terminology, Spark architecture, I would be giving you an idea. But as I've said, it's purely for Power BI. In terms of Power BI, what is required in ADF, what is required in Azure services that we would be covering. Okay. So if you want to move out, then completely you need to have end-to-end -end Python exposure for the data engineering course. Okay, okay. Hmm. So this is how it, it varies. If you yeah. don't want Power BI, then data engineering is good. I mean, it's feasible for you. Okay. Okay. Can can we manage uh, Ritesh? Like uh, till the six years, I don't have exposure to uh, coding at all. So can I manage to write if I uh, join data engineering, for example? Managing, see, it is up to your interest. There are people yeah. who have interest in engineering part. In that case, that course is feasible for you. Managing C. Okay. Now, if you have a good exposure to SQL, I'm not sure if you write uh, complex SQL queries or not. But mm -hmm. C, Python is also not that difficult. Uh, if you yeah. compare it with any programming language, Python is way more easier. Yeah. Now, the thing is, in case of data engineering, every day you have to write code. Every day yeah. you will come across some coding concept. I mean, there won't be any drag and drop directly. Here, yeah. more a kind of uh, drag and drop. Um, understanding the services and utilizing it as and when required. Not more of uh, big data, not more of um, handling the Spark architecture. So that all part is not present in the Power BI with the fabric. Okay. okay. And, and one more last question with this. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, after completing this course, can we try to attend this uh, Microsoft uh, uh, fabric certification? Is there, right? Is that one or else ADF, uh, sorry, I mean, Azure certification, Azure fundamentals, can we attend? Yes, AZ900, uh, I have already shared a few dumps with the uh, Power BI batch who is continuing. So for you folks also, I would be sharing the dumps. Yeah, for Fabric DB certification, yes, uh, you can have, uh, I mean, maybe I'll share you the dumps also. The thing is, mm -hmm. for Fabric, it is, Every time there are few new updates coming into picture, it is still in preview mode, right? It is not yet released completely. So there are few options. There are few services which might change. Yeah, um, I would give you an exposure that this is how the questions are asked. Um, I'm not sure if you have PL300 com yeah. certification. Yeah I, completed. yeah, I completed PL300 already. Okay, then it would be easier for you. Then it would be easier for you to go with DP also, the fabric no. certification as well. No, okay. Thank you, Ritesh. Okay, so, and this is common question. I mean, nothing wrong to ask. Uh, let me also give you an idea. Uh, okay, I'm sharing my screen. Let me know if you are able to see. Mm, so, see, if you take a consideration of only Power BI uh, in current market, see, Power BI is not outdated. It's one of the leading reporting tool only. But in current market, we are taking a consideration what every company is expecting is only power bi is not the ideal requirement 
apart from power bi you should be very good in sql okay may not be that expertise at the advanced architect level expertise there are few concepts in sql which are used by some architects uh, that uh, data warehousing maybe the data lake concepts with with respect to sql that all high level architectural concepts are not required but you should be very good in the understanding of sql how to write queries how to enhance the queries how to write some stored procedures how to create some views so that is one common thing and every company i mean not with not do not go with any company with respect to any data role you are looking out for power bi is a data role data analysis role for any kind of data role sql is must you should know sql a good amount of sql as i've said not architect level but a good amount of sql is must now only power bi as i've said there are no uh, direct scope i am only talking about only bbi no direct scope there isn't any organization which is only looking out for power bi because see there are many options which are coming in power bi where it is uh, losing maybe the introduction of copilot individual can ask a question and it can create some formulas but i have i've already uh, for the power bi batch i'm not sure if you have attended any power bi sessions from the ksa or maybe you have gone through some youtube videos also from the very first day of power bi inception we always say that only power bi is a limited scope apart from power bi if you know adf if you know some uh, azure services which are frequently used uh, we kind of started with storage account yesterday we kind of started i mean we would be starting with some other services also if you know these etl services if you know these some storage services it would be added advantage that is the reason they have introduced fabric where all these important services are clubbed in one single umbrella just because only power bi is a limited scope even microsoft has understood yep there are few organizations which require only power bi but once you enter that organization they might have some data which is very large so in order to handle that you have to pitch in you have to suggest them that this is the best tool for etl this is the best tool from the cloud service we can use that so that is how the picture works so you i mean if you want to learn if you want to be in market with power bi then this course is suitable okay if you only want to learn engineering course more a kind of big data more a kind of handling large data loads uh, continuously working on data uh, extracting the data transforming the data in that case data engineering is the correct course so i'm not getting i mean i'm not confusing you people if you want to have exposure of power bi this is right course if you want to move out of power bi and completely work on azure services more a kind of as of said transforming and extracting the data on daily basis in that case azure data engineering is the best course there you will not have a single power bi uh, maybe exposure that is how it works for data engineering no power bi exposure is there okay for data analysis with data engineering there is power bi and as i've said adf moreover end to end adf is covered and there are few dependent services which are frequently used i hope that answers just one question that is a entirely different uh, uh, yes. engineering side not yep. for the reporting side yeah uh, not for uh, reporting side yeah actually i think uh, the combination power bi with the data engineering may, may be good um yeah see me if you want to have an reporting exposure in that case this is the correct course yeah actually very few people are there the combination uh, we mm. are already in that scenario yeah so what about this uh, fabrication uh, micro okay see fabric is a product i mean rather people going with individual services in power uh, the azure portal they are using it in fabric and as i've said see fabric is also part of azure for 60 days you can get free trial after 60 days it is a part of azure um from the day one if you are attending it is a part of azure you will get 60 days trial once that trial is done see i am in the uh, azure portal 
here the microsoft fabric is there you have to create a new fabric capacity from here you can select which capacity of fabric you want depending on that fabric will handle how amount of resources how amount of data you are utilizing you have to select this SKUs. So somewhere fabric is also a product of cloud only, nowhere different. Just in order to use certain group of services, rather than creating every service separately, they are clubbed together in one single service. That's the only difference. And that is the only advantage which you get if you go with fabric. But yeah. it has to from the cloud. Yep. Yeah, thank you, Hitesh. And one more doubt. What is the T-Mobile? What is? T-Mobile. And where did you get this question from? See, in my organization. T-Mobile? Yeah. Can you go back and ask them what exactly they are expecting in T-Mobile? I mean, what my is T-Mobile? company T is moving to T-Mobile. No, like Airtel, how any... it is in India? In USA, it is T-Mobile. We do have T-Mobile. Mm, that, uh, that, that I know. AT&T, all this. Yeah. Mm. Maybe they are moving to that. Uh, Maybe, uh, yeah. Prime would be T-Mobile. That can be. Is, is it the software, T-Mobile? No, no. It is not software. It is a company name. It can be a client. It's a phone service. How do you have like Airtel in India? Here it is T-Mobile. Actually, in the screenshot, I have seen these new technology names. I don't know where the, it is going to be. Mobile, at and all our clients in your. Okay, okay, thanks. Okay, um, maybe we can have a discussion at the end. Uh, we kind of uh, have utilized 10 more minutes. Uh, yeah, so let's sir, continue sorry, with... Sir, sorry, sir, sorry to interrupt one more question. No, no problem. Yep. Yeah, actually, we have a SQL basic uh, knowledge. Mm -hmm. Do you want to go with the architecture level? Are there any uh, facility in the case? Or, uh, Your total experience? Yes, uh, almost 15. Okay. And more a uh, more kind of end-to-end -end IT exposure only? Or IT some only, -IT? but I worked on MSBA mm -hmm. and uh, in uh, SSAS, SSIS, SSAS, Tabler model and uh, MDX model. But, okay. Uh, I want to become a good in uh, data side, like architecture level. Uh, where I need to learn? Is there any classes are going for in KSR? Architecture level, as of now, we don't have any. Uh, we have only data engineering. We have only Power BI. Uh, we have some Power Platform courses also, and we have some Snowflake with AWS. Okay. So for SQL architecture level, no. Uh, courses which is going on in KSR. Yep. Thank you, everyone. Um, let's connect back on Monday. Yep. I'm closing this.